is tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we are taking a look at how to create tiled pixel art. Now, as you can see in this lovely background, I'm gonna be using a piece of software called Marmoset Hexels, but you can do this in any software that supports pixels, whether that's Photoshop, whether it is Marmoset, whether it is other pixel-based software, who knows? I'm gonna create a standard canvas at 48 by 48 in normal pixels, and I'm gonna hit create. Now, I'm gonna keep this as software agnostic as possible, however, um, pixel based software like Hexels and other ones designed specifically for pixel art usually have something called a wrapping preview, which basically means that whatever you draw off the edge of the canvas comes in on the right hand side of the canvas here. Now you can do this without um, any kind of wrapping software. It's just not quite as easy. So for example, if I did a pixel here on the third pixel down from the left, that means that that when it wraps would come over here to this pixel, meaning that you'd have to just sort of match it up a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight would come in over here, okay? So if I were to draw this like so, okay, these two halves should meet up if I turned on wrapping, which I'll just quickly do and then I'll explain to you how and why I did that, um, just to see if it works. So for example, bam, like so, you can now see that those will line up. So this can be done without wrapping preview. However, it is really, really beneficial if you have software that can do it. Otherwise you just have to think a bit and nobody wants to think when they're doing artwork. They just want to feel it and do it. Um, so today we're going to be creating some tiled cobblestones. Um, for that, we're probably only going to use four colors, to be honest. I'm going to create a light uh, gray with a hint of blue. And when I say light, I don't mean particularly light, I just mean lighter, like so. And I'm gonna create a dark color that I want the pure shadows to be in. And then a cool feature of Mamas and Hexels is you can click and drag between and it creates a color palette for you. Now, like I said, this is gonna be more about the concept of how to create tiled art um, than it is about a specific software. However, I've done a few other pieces of tutorials in this software now, and um, if you guys want software specific pixel art tutorials, I will create one for Photoshop and for Hexels, and I'll go through the specific software if you want. If that is something you want, let me know in the comments or on our Discord, the link to which is in the description below, um, and let me know. Uh, I'm kind of sort of feeling it out with this series, um, seeing what people want, if they want it, whether they want it. Who knows? So let's dive right in then. You can probably see from uh, the desktop before that it's gonna be sort of a tiled background, but you can actually see kind of if you squint where the tiles match up. And we're gonna try and avoid that this time. The way you avoid a tiled piece of artwork looking like a tiled piece of artwork is you pretend there is no edge here, okay? Now, what you'd be tempted to do when drawing say cobblestones, for example, is, um, with your wrapping on, if you have it in the software, you'd be tempted to sort of go, okay, well, here's a bunch of tiles around the edge and here's some blah, 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 like so, and you'd come in and you'd do this like that, okay? And you'd see it's starting to tile. However, doing everything that lines up on the edge of the square is what makes it look like a tile. You need to pretend that the edge of that square isn't there. Now you can do this without wrapping um, just as easily. It just takes a little bit longer. Um, the good thing to do with wrapping is that you can see immediately if there are going to be any straight lines. And the way to get around that is to offset your artwork, whether it's cobblestones or whatever. Today I'm going to use the example of cobblestones, but this applies to anything that you're drawing in pixel art. Um, so say for example I draw my first cobblestone, and let's start maybe here. I'm going to start off the canvas and just sort of bring it around in, like so. Now my next thing might be to go on top and draw another one. But as you can see, we're already starting to get a straight line there. What we want is to offset it a little bit. So this one's quite even. So let's have the one on top of it be heavily weighted inside and it just only touches the outer rim. And then this one on the top of that will have it just only touch the inner rim and be quite heavily weighted outside. Now this outside, as you can tell, is literally just what we're drawing on the top here. So if you didn't have this wrapping preview, all you'd have to do is like I explained earlier, is just draw your first piece like this, move over to the other side, and that's where you're coming back in. Just pretend that's where you're coming back in. Um, once you've done the edges, it doesn't matter. You're sorted. You've got it tiled. You can do whatever you want in the middle. So really, for cobblestone specifically, that's all there is to it. Just sort of draw in some rough and ready shapes like this. Maybe fill that area in. With cobblestones, don't be afraid to leave some gaps. Like this, for example, you might be tempted to do that and turn it into a cobblestone. However, 
What you're actually drawing here is the gaps between stones rather than the stones themselves. So if you were to fill in this area like so and get this sort of darker patch, that's totally fine. It's not a problem at all. Um, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to draw a quick one like this. Um, and then fast forwarding, I'm going to do one at a much higher resolution. I'm just going to explain to you why nowadays that's probably the best thing to do. So if I just quickly fill these in and fast forward, um, I'll explain my thought process behind it. Okay, so we've drawn the gaps between our cobblestones. I'm just going to come over down here to our preview so we can see it in action and add a new layer underneath. And on that layer with just a really big brush, I'm just going to add our lightest color. Now, this doesn't look great, okay? But it is enough to illustrate my point about tiling backgrounds. If I were to export this, well, actually, I don't even need to export it. I can just zoom out a little bit and bring the um, wrapping preview all the way up to max. Now, you can already see that this is tiling. And the reason is, is because it's quite a low resolution. Now, back in the day, they had to have quite a low resolution tile purely because the software couldn't quite handle uh, a tile any bigger. Nowadays, however, if you're doing sort of like a retro inspired game, but it's running on a PC, you can have background tiles that are much larger. Now, imagine this repeating pattern. Now, imagine if you had four times the amount of space to work with, or even two times the amount of space to work with, but you drew the cobblestones at the same size. That gives you much more room for variation. It gives you much more room for different patterns and layers and uh, arrangements of cobblestones without any repetition, without putting too much extra strain on whatever software it is that you're using this for. Um, if you just create it for artwork, then it's even easier. You don't have to worry about that sort of thing. This is a very repeaty pattern, you can tell, mainly because I put these ones in a line by accident, okay? But if we increase the size of this to say, rather than 48, let's have it be 128 by 128 and drew in another round of pixels, you could automatically and immediately see how much better than that is. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna speed through this drawing part of the main ones and then we'll come back and we'll shade the whole thing together and it's gonna look really good. So I'll pop back in once I've done so. So now that we're set up with our 128 by 128, it looks very intimidating and big, but don't worry, it'll soon um, disappear uh, as we start drawing. Um, the one thing I will say is you're gonna be wanting drawing your gaps on your second to darkest color out of your four and drawing the main stone color as your second lightest. This means you've then got a layer for shadow and a layer for highlights if you want them. You can also come back in and make more um, colors later and that sort of thing, but um, four is a good place to start with pixel art because you don't want it to be super detailed Otherwise, you wouldn't be drawing in pixels. Cool So I'm gonna draw the outlines of all of our cobbles and I'm gonna come back to you I'll speed through this, but I won't put it too fast just so you can still see what I'm doing uh, and my thought process behind it about when you're doing tiled backgrounds is not to spend too long in any one place um, otherwise what you end up doing is drawing in a bit of a pattern um, so what I tend to do is scatter some big and small stones um, and then fill in the gaps in between them and what this does is it stops you from growing from one place to another because that any kind of pattern is obviously going to be easily seen when repeated it's not foolproof I'm in no way a <laughs> master of pixel art um, but I found in the few bits that I've done that it is actually quite helpful to do that. Another thing to think about, of course, especially with cobblestones, is uh, where they're going to be used. Is this sort of some posh city? Is it a rundown dungeon? Um, that would obviously affect how many cobblestones you draw, the gaps in between them. You know, if it's a quite well used city, they're going to be sort of more regimented, um, more maintained. Whereas if it's a rundown dungeon, then there's going to be more gaps like there are here between them. Uh, the same thing applies to um, if you were doing trees, like leaves, foliage, or a rock, a boulder, anything like that that you want to tile. Think about where it is, how it's being used. Um, is it, what time of year is it? You know, is it winter? Is it summer? Is it going to be raining? Is it going to be sunny? Uh, all these things are going to affect the texture uh, and what it is that you're drawing. I won't get too much into it because I don't know so much myself uh, and this is more a sort of basic tutorial on tiling. 
but being aware of these things as you draw is uh, quite important. What's also important is uh, zooming out every now and then. So you're working quite close up to your work. Um, you've obviously got a preview here if you wanted to see the single thing itself, but if you zoom out with a texture tiled, then you can automatically see whether or not it's looking good, whether or not you're starting to draw in lines. Um, viewing it at the size it is intended to be used uh, is a really important step. One other last thing I will say as well is that pixel art is a great way to get started in doing sort of digital art because you don't need any special equipment for it. Uh, point of fact, I'm actually using a mouse to do this, whereas usually I'd be using a you know graphics tablet with a pen. Um, I still prefer using my graphics tablet and my pen, even for pixel art. But for the sake of this tutorial, I thought I'd show you guys that it is 100% possible using a mouse. Um, I mean, the guys, when they were doing this for real back in the day, they certainly didn't have graphics tablets with pens and things like that involved. If you wanted to, you could do it click by click, single pixel at a time. Um, there's no need to though. Um, you can draw pixel art just as smoothly with a mouse because it's not reliant on smooth curved lines. Its beauty is sort of in its jaggedness, which is quite useful. Um, so you can sort of just dive right in straight away. So that is pretty much it then. You can easily see by zooming out which bits should be light, which bits should be dark. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that as a texture. Um, but say for example, when you zoom out, you can see some bits are quite chunky already. Um, if you wanted to thin those out so you get a bit more of an opportunity when shading later, you absolutely can. If you want to go for that more sort of chunky look, that's also fine too. Um, so from this point on, uh, I'm just going to be focusing on shaving, uh, shaving, uh, shading, it's because I was trimming a bit off there shading these uh, cobbles um, because we're pretty much there at the limit. I might go back and undo slash overdo some of the stuff that we've done, but like I said, that's not a problem. The whole point of this is it's freedom. And luckily with the preview down here, you can automatically see what's gonna look like what um, when it's actually finished and done with none of these sort of grids going across it. So we've got our lines and we've got our shadows. The next step is just to add a deeper layer of shadow between the darkest parts of the stones and then a lighter layer of highlights on top of that. From there, you can then add more detail sporadically, whereas this is still quite a uniform thing. Um, you can also add other things like little patches of grass or puddles or whatever you want, slime <laughs> to, the, um, to the cobblestone. It's completely up to you at this point. Um, so sort of follow along, but don't try and copy. Try and sort of develop your own little style uh, and your own little cobblestone um, because you don't learn by copying you learn by doing so first step is to add additional shadows now unless you're very very lucky you won't be able to select a large portion with the magic wand tool of your pixel floor i'm quite lucky in that they are all mainly connected there are a few spots here look which aren't now it might be worth if you know that you don't want to overlap any of these stones, it might be worth going through with the magic wand tool and sort of just picking up every pixel on this layer, okay? Bearing in mind that if you do do this, it is quite distracting having these little marching ants, okay? Um, and it does sort of affect how you view the shadows of the cobblestones. It's not necessarily a problem as long as you're aware of that when you're painting. Um, what this does do is it allows you to scribble a little bit more. If you don't mind being patient and not scribbling, um, you don't have to do this step at all. You can literally just go over manually each of your pixels on your cracks layer. Okay. But what I'm going to do for the sake of the tutorial is I'm just going to pick up pretty much every stray that I can see. It doesn't matter if you miss the odd one. Um, because like I said, it's pixel art. Uh, I'm going to go through like this. Yep, yeah, that's pretty much there. Just going to zoom out. And I'm going to add a new layer on top. And I'm going to paint my shadows into this layer. And I'm going to call it shadows. I'm going to take my darkest color. And on a single pixel brush, I'm going to find the bits which are thicker. Uh, and I'm just going to go through and paint them. I'm going to make sure I'm on replace. You probably won't have this option if you're on um, a Photoshop. Sorry, I had a bit of a mind fart there. Um, so I'm just going to go through like this with my paint tool and just sort of paint down the middle 
of these stones, okay? Doesn't matter if I'm super accurate or not, because like you can see here, it is just a texture. Although I do think now that this is probably a little bit too dark. So what I am gonna do is undo all of that and just brighten up this shadow color just a little bit. Not so much that it's indistinguishable, but just a touch. And what I'm doing is I'm checking my preview for this, okay? I'm not checking the artwork itself because of all the dancing, marching ants. Um, so I'm just sort of scribbling over each bit. Wherever there's a pool, I might, you know, go a bit mad and sort of just paint all the way over it. Um, but I'm going to go through my entire piece of artwork like this and get back to you when I'm done. Just being aware that the stones are going to be darker in the larger gaps, depending, of course, where your light source is going to come from. So make sure you really do get those gaps in there. Okay, so I'm mostly done with my scribbling now. Um, it doesn't look incredible from the offset uh, until you add the contrast on it, because at the moment it's kind of hard to tell, especially with all the dancing ants, um, what really is going on. Now, that does add a little bit of texture when you zoom out, but it almost seems like too much. When you add your um, highlights on top of that though, um, it will look just great, which is what we're gonna do now. So we've got our base stones, which are sort of uh, this color here. Um, and we're gonna add in our highlights now, which are the brighter colors, okay? Um, now to do that, we're gonna need a little bit more control. Um, and what we're gonna do is just choose where our light source is coming from. For my one, it's gonna be coming from the right, like this. Um, so I'm actually gonna just highlight the right half of every stone, essentially. Um, before I do that, however, I'm gonna try a technique which I haven't tried before. Um, and I'm just gonna take my gaps layer and with a layer on top, I'm gonna select a large portion of it. Now I've no idea if this is gonna look any good or not. Like so, I'm gonna grab most of it. I'm gonna go over to a layer underneath it and I'm gonna grab my darkest layer like so, but I'm gonna put the um, opacity of the layer down to 50%, like so. Grab my brush tool and just paint sort of full sections like this. And what this should do is help to even out some of those darker areas. So if we then deselect, see what that looks like. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Not all of it, but most of it. There we go, that'll do. Right, let's add in our cobblestone highlights. So just call this high. Grab our lightest color, put our brush tool back down. And what you can do is take this sort of patch by patch. So I'm gonna go to the magic wand, oops, excuse me, and on my gaps layer, I'm gonna just grab a few areas inside of the cobblestones. Remembering, of course, that some of these are in fact overlapping, okay? So the ones towards the edges, it's probably not gonna be best to do those. In fact, anything that overlaps, I'm just gonna do manually, okay? So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna grab everything that isn't on the edge of the page. Okay, so now that I've got every shape that isn't on the edge of the page, I'm gonna start highlighting these in. Um, then we'll go through and just manually do the rest. The reason being is that if I painted, for example, the right-hand side of this one here at the top, um, it wouldn't then actually work because it would have a sort of cutoff and then I'd have to go back down to the bottom here and remember it. Whereas if you do them manually, you can just tell, okay? So we're gonna go up here to our high layer, gonna get our brush out, maybe one or two pixels in size, and we're literally just gonna go through and paint the right-hand side of the stone. A good technique to do is to then dither them out a little bit, okay? Like so. Maybe that's a bit too far over. Maybe we'll just do here and start to dither on this layer, like that. And what this does is it creates just a little bit of depth, okay? So I'm gonna go through now and do all of those. Remembering, of course, that my light source is coming from the right-hand side, like this, 
okay, uh, in this direction, and then you dither out just before halfway. So you're really only shading about half of the stone uh, at this point in time. Remember also that stones aren't entirely flat, they have a little bit of curve to them. So if you wanted to on some of the larger ones, you can actually come back in and undither them on the other side to imply a little bit of a curve if you wanted to. Best not to do it on all of them, um, or indeed all the way through, but on some it does actually look very good. And then of course I'm checking back at regular intervals towards my preview here, um, zooming out as well so I can see sort of the overall look of the thing, bearing in mind the whole time that I am very, very close at the moment. Um, so there's no need to waste time on my tiny, tiny details that nobody's gonna see on its full um, resolution. That doesn't mean, however, that you can just get away with being lazy. Um, like I said, one pixel can sort of make all the difference in this kind of artwork. Uh, and the smaller the resolution, the more difference that one pixel will make in terms of the design. Okay, so I've done pretty much all of the cobbles in the middle um, using that grid now. And what this does is it highlights any mistakes that you've made. Um, for example, if I zoom out so there's no grid, there's probably some bits here which are too light to be small stones, like this small area here, this one down here, this one over here, and probably would look better as shadow. Um, and that's really easy to fix. You can just sort of zoom out, see where you want it to be, and then you can come in and then just shadow those up a little bit. Um, like I said, it helps if the texture you're wanting to use is um, more rough, you know, like rough cobblestone, that sort of thing. If you want something a bit neater, then you do unfortunately have to be a little bit neater. Um, I'm pretty happy with this so far though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move on to the stones around the edges. And this is exactly the same process, apart from uh, the only difference is, this time you don't have the map to guide you because you're gonna have to draw off screen a little bit in order to match those up, okay? So you've just got to come in like this. Um, and the first thing you need to do, of course, is make sure that all your layers are actually wrapping. So for example, this shadow is not wrapping and these highlights need to wrap as well. And what that'll do is it'll allow you to come in and draw off of the screen. Uh, obviously, if you're doing this in Photoshop, still exactly the same process. You just do it a little bit manually, simple as that. And then just stop whenever you get to the rest of that particular stone and you'll see that that will then loop in back down the bottom here. So if I were to just draw in a few extra highlights like that, they'd also appear up there. Nice and simple. I'm just gonna go around the edge now and I'm gonna um, do all that on the edging stones and I'll see you on the other side. the benefit of doing it in a software like Hexels is that when I'm doing the top and the right, I'm also simultaneously doing the left and the bottom as well, because it is automatically wrapping that for me. Um, so there's less to think about when it comes to actually creating these stones. So apart from a few tweaks and touches, I'd say we're done. One thing you can do if you want to is you can bring in a super highlight color and on a new layer as well, which you're also gonna wrap, um, you can come in and just add in some real highlights like this. Um, it's up to you whether you do this. Uh, it's kind of like an optional one. I'm not sure I like it being that bright um, or that I like it for this design, but you can do so. Uh, let's just drop it down, maybe like that. What it does, it just adds that final layer of distinction and uniqueness because you can kind of be a little bit sporadic with these highlights. As long as they're not really anywhere that's um, in an area that's supposed to be dark, you only put them on big areas of bright white or bright light color, like here, for example, on the larger stones. 
Um, it can just add a little bit of extra detail at a glance that breaks up sort of these larger areas um, and just creates a little bit more texture. Now, with the stones, you're done. But because we're what, using a bit of a larger um, canvas now, I don't know why, but that was really hard to get out. Um, what you can do is add a little bit more detail. Bear in mind that anything that you do in just one place will be quite obviously repeated. So say, for example, I were to grab a sort of dark brownish color. Let's have a light like this. And then let's have a darker one like that. And then one in between. If I were to grab this dark brown color and choose some of these larger areas of mud as um, uh, large areas of in between, sorry, as mud, um, what you could do is add in some few spots of grass here and there or mold or, or whatever you want. Uh, I'm doing this all on a separate layer just to show you what the possibilities are. Um, all I'm doing is finding the thicker dark patches because that's where naturally mud will have formed in the bigger gaps. And I'm just going to sort of paint in a little bit like this. And I'm going to sort of spatter it around a little bit just so it doesn't loop quite so obviously. You can see that if we had one of these patches of mud or grass when I add it in a minute, um, that it would quite obviously tile. Whereas if you add them in more sp sporadic shapes and positions, you can get away with it a little bit more. Now, this is an entirely optional step, like I said, but it does add quite a nice little touch. I'm gonna to choose a green, obviously, for the grass. So it'd be slightly sickly and a slightly sickly darker green. Like that oh, it was too saturated though. That'll be nice. And then what you can just do is come in, just do a few little strands and then just highlight these a little bit. Just grab the tips. Doesn't matter if you, if you uh, draw um, a little bit off what your original one was, that's no problem. Because grass is a natural thing and it does grow a little bit sporadically. You can sort of do some off by itself without any mud, just not too much. Otherwise it will just stand out too much against the cobblestones. So you can do that. For example, let's add in just a few little tufts on this one. And make sure they do follow the shape of the rocks a little bit as well. You don't want them to be sort of two out there. At the same time, if they don't, it does allow for some good variation. If I do a nice thick cluster here, just sort of bring those out just a little bit. You can see I'm using the preview down here as a guide to what this is actually gonna look like as a final product. Like so, okay. Now I'm gonna make sure that this layer wraps and we can see what it looks like all the way over. Not too bad, okay. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna export two versions, one with and one without the mud. I could keep going, I could add more layers of detail, I could tweak and finalize this shading a little bit more, but I think for the sake of this, it's gonna work quite well. I mean, look at that, not too shabby, if I don't say so myself. Now obviously, you might wanna use this at sort of this sort of resolution here. Um, I can already see that if I put something in the middle here, it might work on um, breaking up these grass tufts, grass tufts a bit. Um, or what you can do is if you just bring the wrapping down, you can come in with your selection tool. This is again why we keep everything on separate layers. And you can take one of these tufts, maybe this one, and you can try it somewhere else. That doesn't look too bad. There we go, deselect that, zoom out again, bring the wrapping preview up. Voila, that doesn't look too bad. Quite happy with that. So when it comes to tile art, there's a few things to remember. One is get your flat colors down first. So if you're gonna work with four colors, you get your basic stone color down or your basic texture color down. That'll usually be the second of the four colors. Then you do your shadows. You're basically drawing where your objects aren't. You're sort of drawing in relief, if that makes sense. That's with your darkest color. The next step is to do a little bit of mixing between the shadows and the plane with your third color and then add in some highlights with the um, highlighted color. If you want to, you can then come in and add even a little bit more detail with just a touch of extra highlights 
or you can then come in and add some details which are separate to the main pattern which is used to break it up so it looks less like a tile um, apart from that that's really all there is to it uh, I think I might just add another little grass tuft here just because when I was zoomed out there I could see a lot of black in this area and uh, I'm not a fan of sort of these huge slabs of color I think these sort of patterns especially at higher resolution work better when there's a little bit of fine tuning to it so I'm just going to draw in these few last braids of grass and I'm being quite carefree here there's no reason to sort of bog yourself down in the finer finer details just have fun with it and voila there you go happy with that Thanks very much for watching, everybody. I do hope you find this useful. Again, let me know if you want this in a more software-specific tutorial style. I try to keep it as software agnostic as possible um, so that you guys can um, enjoy the tutorials. Apparently, Jumpy Boy is playing Arizona Sunshine on Steam. Good o. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.